Hello there, welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be unboxing this here. This is the Nano Beam NBE M5 16 version. This is the cheaper one, possibly the cheapest version that they do. It can do Wi-Fi ranges up to 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers, which is about 6.4 miles. And uh, basically you can put one on one building, one on another, and do a very long range wireless uh, network connection. Now this is going to be used for a very short distance really, it's just going from one building to another building across the main road. But this is the only unit that really does that kind of thing at a cheap price point. Now I could pick these up for around about £55-60 and that was it. It's not the fastest speed version, they do do much quicker ones. This one I believe is capable of up to 150 megabits per second. You can see the model number here, MB M516. So I'm just going to quickly show you around the packaging and we're going to take this thing out the box and have a look at it. So on the back here we've got the features, compact form factor with integrated radio antenna, innovative plug and play design for quick installation, high efficiency antenna beam performance powered by Air Max technology. You can see a picture of the back of the unit here. This contains the Nano and M5, the ball joint mount, a lock ring, metal strap, PoE adapter, power cord and a quick start guide. And this is the default way of accessing it, the IP address, name and password. Because you have to configure these things. So, uh, let's get this out of the box. And here we've got the unit itself with what looks like a sticky protective plastic cover. Over the front, which I'm going to leave on for the moment. On the back, you can see we've got this spirit level, max polarity aligned. So that allows you to get the unit perfectly straight wherever you're mounting it, whether you're mounting it onto a wall, a pole or anything else. These will be mounted to a brick wall, so I've bought the separate wall mounting piece that they offer as well. On the side here we've got a little power, a transfer and a signal level set of lights I believe those are. I'll put the unit on in a moment. And that's pretty much it, there's not much else to it. This here, you pop off. And in here, we have got the UXC network logo, the brand, the POE, 24 volts, 0.5 amps that it requires, all the markings. And we can see in there, there's an Ethernet connection and a reset button. And that's it. You basically just run an Ethernet cable up to this, obviously of appropriate weather rating. In the box, we've also got a power cable, which in my case is this uh, European Type 1, but I don't. That doesn't matter to me anyway, because it's only a cloverleaf fitting. These are easily available. We've got the quick start guide. The pole mounting clamp ring, which you would tighten with a screwdriver and it would shrink to the size of the pole that you're mounting the unit on. There's the ball joint for the mount. This is the ring that goes over this, like so. Then you would attach that onto the back of the unit and when this is tightened up it will fix itself into position and the dish won't move. Then you just simply loosen that to reposition. So it's quite a cool little mounting mechanism they've got going on. We've also got in here the last thing which is the PoE or power supply adapter. You just plug this into the mains, put your LAN connection into here connect this PoE output to the unit and that's it. This powers the unit and acts as a point for you to plug the cable in into to connect it to the network. So let's power this thing on really quickly and I'll show you a demo. Okay so this is how the setup is on these things. It's basically just power plug to this box, you plug in your network in, it comes out on an ethernet cable and goes into the beam unit just like that. And then this cover goes on over there like that, and that's basically it. So I'm just going to plug this in, I've not actually got my laptop or anything connected to this at the moment, but the unit should still power on regardless. So if we look here at the side, you can see some little lights have illuminated there. You can see the light on the power adapter as well. And that means we're basically ready to set this unit up. This light should come on if I connect it to a network, which I'm going to get my laptop and do that now. Okay. So I've now connected up 
the Ethernet cable into the laptop, you can see the activity light is flashing on the unit. So I'm not going to go too far into setting this thing up, I'll just show you how to get to the interface within Windows 7. And then I will do a separate video on actually setting up the pair of these to communicate with one another wirelessly. So I'm going to switch to the screen recorder on my laptop. Okay, so once the unit's turned on and connected to your system, you'll see down in the corner that it's trying to connect to a network. And it will just come up identifying, identifying, or it'll say unknown network. Now you can either click here and go open network and sharing center to get into your connections. Or you can go start, control panel, and then go network and sharing center here. But you want to get to this screen at the top here, go change adapter settings. And then you can see in my case, I have disconnected from my Wi-Fi on my laptop and I'm just leaving one connection going, which is the Ethernet one here, to simplify this. So you want to right click your Ethernet and go to properties. This window will then open. You want to go down to IP version 4, properties again. And in here go we use the following IP address. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set a static IP address on the laptop, which will allow you to see the nano beam and change the settings. So 192.168.1, which follows the same version as is on the box. Now the beam is 0.20, so we could use any number from 1 all the way up to 254 in this box. For the last digit of the IP address, it doesn't matter, so long as it's not 20, it can be anything else because 20 is already used by the nano beam. Just click in the subnet mask box and it'll fill 255, 255, 255, Nothing else we need to change, just click OK and close. This will now just go unidentified, unidentified network and if we open a browser, in my case I'll use Firefox, we'll be able to navigate to the IP address that's on the box of the unit which is 192.168.1.20 Press enter it will come up with this, your connection is not secure. Here you can simply go advanced, scroll down, add exception, and then it comes up location, blah, 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 confirm security exception. Then the page will load. This is because this page uses HTTPS, which is a secure method of connecting to a website, but it doesn't have a certificate, which each website should have a valid certificate if it's a website on the internet. In this case it doesn't matter because we're only accessing a local device. Username and password we can enter here, UBNT, UBNT, same as it says on the box. Hit what country you're in, which in my case it's United Kingdom. Language is English, these are the terms of use, so we'll read through those. Agree to the agreement and click login. I'm going to click no for this, don't save my password. And here we go, we're logged into the unit. Now in my case that took about one to two minutes for the page to load and everything to come on. It may vary in your case. You can see here it says to me you're using the default administrator password changing the system page. Do go ahead and change your administrator password. I'm going to leave this video here though because this was literally just a case of showing you what came in the box with the unit and a quick overview of setting it up and how to find the page where you configure it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please leave a like, remember to check out my other videos on the Nano Beam, which I will be doing as well as uh, home networking videos. I'm setting up the remote site, in this case uh, the PFSense router is going to be at one location and the remote site is going to have no router at all, it's just going to operate with a switch on that end. But yeah, if you're interested in seeing more networking stuff and other tech videos, subscribe to my channel. Leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.